Morning everyone. So today we've got my brother's V-Strom here and he's had a trouble, a little bit of trouble with the starter switch. Um, dead when he hits it. So we've talked to a few people and I think probably the first thing to try and um, check is the starter solenoid. Um, so when I looked on YouTube for a bit of information, I couldn't find any decent video about start solenoids for V-Stroms anywhere. So I thought I'd make my own. So first thing is location. Really easy to find. Just whip the seat off and there it is. So we'll um, press on with that. And um, you can buy them online for anything from about 15 quid to about uh, 60 if you're full enough to pay that really. But uh, we opted for buying one in sort of middle of the price range um, from a well-known supplier. First things first, cup of coffee. So my poor brother has had a little bit of bad luck with this bike. It blew over in a gale and um, damaged this kind of area. And he had it fixed uh, on the insurance. And then someone just a short few weeks later knocked it over in a car park. Neither of the times was he around, but um, that time he needed to have this bit replaced, this bit here, this stuff, new mirror, um, new indicator, and the bike was away for weeks and weeks and weeks through the insurance company. Um, but they've done an amazing job. But now he's just telling me his insurance has gone through the roof, even though he wasn't even present both times that the, the damage occurred. You know, nothing to do with his risky drive and riding or anything. There we are. That's the modern world, it's rubbish. So we've just got a plastic cover, keep the moisture out, two clips, and looks like a four pin, I think it's four pins, yeah, on a plug, so they'll just push off and unclip. So obviously, before we start, we're just gonna disconnect the battery. So the four pin connector, you just squeeze this tab here and ease it off. It was a bit stiff, but it came, and um, comes away like that. And the clear protective cover you just squeeze these two tabs and lift it away there we go back in focus so I think it's on a rubber mount gonna just undo these two terminals should just pull out I think so the unit just sits in a little rubber cup um, so it just pulls out of that rubber cup and then you just have to connect disconnect the terminals and it'll come away oh, I've taken the two fuses out just to put them in the spares box. So uh, the little rubber um, mount got a split in it, uh, but it turns out the new unit uh, uh, comes with a fresh one anyway, so that's good. Got a small Hornady friend down here. So the replacement part came with these small fuse covers, but I'm gonna take those off, they just pull off and put the original cap back on because it covers the terminals as well and I've just had a little wipe around and clean up and sort of clean the terminals a bit so um, the reassembly is the reverse <laughs> it's not, not much to it is there but we just got to stick this on there put the terminals on see if it works so I'll check back with you in a moment so we're going to have to reuse the old rubber cradle because um, I don't know if you can see the difference in dimensions there. The slot here compared to the slot there, even though this is rubber, there's absolutely no way this is going on the lug. I've tried and it'll just split before it, it goes or break the lug. So we're going to have to reuse that one. Okay, so there it is, all done, and we're going to do a first start thing. Now, I appreciate that there are a bunch of things I could have tested, so, you know, no need to say all that in the comments because I'm well aware. What we did, though, this was only a few quid, and it's the bike is uh, 10, 11 years old now. 14 years old, I've just been reminded. So, no harm in changing a component like this anyway. We suspect it could be this, but if not, it maybe could be 
the start switch. So here we go. Right, so turn it on. It's in neutral. All right. And uh, could you pull the clutch in? I've got one hand here. All right, so clutch pulled in over there. Away we go. Just a little aside uh, about this uh, dodgy solenoid. So this is off um, DL650, Generation 1. But the same solenoid is used on quite a lot of Suzuki bikes, like uh, the SV650 has got this one. Uh, there's quite a few other models that use this same solenoid. And just to say, when you've got it off, um, these two pins, they are linked to the uh, clutch so without the clutch pulled in the solenoid won't work and these two pins are the ones that energize the solenoid so the quick way to test this on the bench is to hook up um, a 12 volt battery and have a couple of wires and touch uh, these two um, pins with your wires it doesn't matter which way that they are around because they're not polarity sensitive in this test and if the solenoid's good uh, it'll jump uh, with a really strong click like a jumping bean almost jump on the bench if you hear just a little tick and the thing doesn't have any sort of definite you know click but a little tick it's more likely that the, the solenoid is sticking now with this one what happened was when I tested it on the bench it jumped and clicked and jumped and clicked like it was good and then after four or five times of doing that then it stopped doing it and it got stuck and that was why the fault on the bike was kind of intermittent because the solenoid would work you know five times out of ten and five times it wouldn't I'll show you the, the rig up if I can so all you need is a 12 volt battery with a couple of wires crocodile clipped to the terminals and then with these ends you put them on the posts that I just showed you earlier on. So just touch these wires on the pins and there's a click, there's a click and now it's sticking. Click, 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 click and stick in again. Click in and stick in. Click in and then just now it's yeah now it's completely sticking so you'll see the difference there you know a few times it was clicking and jumping and then a few times it was just ticking or not even reacting at all